the week 11 waiver wires here pretty decent week I, I guess for this late into the season you probably don't have that much fab budget left but if you do have some bucks remaining uh we're gonna get you guys straight up uh sosa's got his waiver wire column here the first name on it and the cover image is isaiah pacheco yep uh it, it looks like Kansas City's backfield is starting to evolve. And I wonder if this is just going to be like a one week off type of thing, or if this is going to be the new norm moving forward. Obviously, Clyde Edwards Hilaire basically was a dud. He didn't even have a role in this game. Uh, and Isaiah Pacheco now started three games in a row, but not just a starter in nomenclature. Like this guy was actually the number one running back for this team. Uh, and, and it's fascinating too, because McKinnon went into this game with two injuries. I think it was a shoulder and something else. And yet he still severely outsnapped and outplayed Edwards Hilaire. So that really suggests to me that I don't know if there was something behind the scenes that we don't know about or if they're just really down on him right now and Pacheco's the new guy. Either way, Pacheco looks like the new running back one there. Uh, he's definitely going to be rostered, I think, in a lot more leagues after this week. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how this is going to evolve over the next few weeks. But as of right now, he looks like the new running back one in Kansas City. Going into this week, I had all the Kansas City running backs in like the mid like RB thirties, basically you can't play any of these guys. Cause there was three of them and Kansas City doesn't use their running backs all that often. Some of their uh, schemed up stuff is to a McCole hard McAdarius, Tony type, some of these backup tight ends even. Uh, but what happened here is they get rid of CH's playing time. I believe he only played like four or six snaps on the game. Isaiah Pacheco actually has a fumble early in this game and they go back to him instead of benching him. And for a lot of day three rookies, that's the opportunity. Uh, you put the ball on the ground get out of here to me it's going to be isaiah pacheco on early downs and then jarek mckinnon on passing downs as you as you can see on this chart this is the two minute drill so jarek mckinnon's going to have that jarek mckinnon's going to catch some passes if the chiefs are ever trailing but i think isaiah pacheco certainly probably has the best odds of scoring a touchdown at this point i don't want to get too carried away just because the chiefs you know are going to be passing the ball a ton but if you are looking for just a cheap touchdown here and there i think that isaiah pacheco is firmly on that list now uh Let's stay with the Chiefs. This is your number three name, Kadarius Tony. Yeah, uh, Kadarius Tony. He's starting to evolve in that offense. Obviously, we're going to see upticks. I think in pretty much usage across the board as we go forward. Traded in Week Nine, uh, so you know hardly played at all. But you're starting to see they're really starting to try to scheme up plays for this guy. Like it's not just a lineup outside the numbers, go run a route type of situation. And the chiefs, obviously, as we know, one of the best offensive schemes in football, they do a great job of scheming these guys up. And particularly in that red zone inside the 10 yard line area, that's where Kadarius Tony did some of his work. I think it was on a jet sweep and uh, he ends up catching the touchdown there. So, Nicole Hardman didn't play in this game. He's been that guy for the last few weeks. But as we know, they went out and got Tony for a reason. They were high on him pre-draft. And uh, obviously, he's got the skill set where, you know, you get the ball in his hands. He's one of the most exciting players in football. So you have to expect that he's going to see increases across the board in snap share, uh, target share, like really everything, routes run. How much uh, is he, you know, is he going to be a full-time player? I don't know. But I know that Juju Smith-Schuster got hurt in this game. Doesn't look too promising for him, obviously. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling got banged up in this game as well. He did return to the contest, but this is a receiving core with a lot of injuries right now. And he's a guy that's going to only see more playing time, uh, moving forward, I think. So, a guy that I definitely want to have on my roster, probably not going to be very consistent, maybe a little bit boomer bust, but someone you definitely should roster. Yeah, he's like the perfect bench stash. I'm not sure if you have to be playing him. I will say this next week, if Juju's out or uh, McCole Hardman is out, then Kadarius Tony is locked in to a starting job. Probably going to be the number three wide receiver until he gets his feet wet a little bit more. But to me, just based off of talent, pure skills, I think Kadarius Tony is the best wide receiver on the Chiefs. I do think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve here, but you definitely can do worse. I think the biggest one is McCole Hardman, Kadarius Tony kind of uh, competing for the same role. So if McCole Hardman misses another game, I think that's when it's really wheels up. For Kadarius Tony. All right, we'll backtrack a little bit. Rashad White, your number two waiver wire ad of, of the week. We've only been talking about him for the entire season. <laughs> we finally have some noise going into their uh, week 11 bye. Yeah, I think this is going to be the last week where we get to talk about him, unfortunately. There's not going to be any more opportunities to add him off the waiver wire. I think this is the final week. So we've talked about it all year. You talked about it with Josh, too. He's the guy now. It looks like he's the running back one. He started his first game, obviously, and he was close to a 50 50 type of split with Leonard Fournette. I'm not going to get carried away and tell you, you know, this is a running back one the rest of the season or something like that. That's not the case. I think Fournette is still going to be very involved there. Maybe a 50 50 60 40 type of split. Obviously Fournette, obviously going to be an option in that red zone 
you know, inside the five yard line area. He's a big back, but he did sustain a hip injury in this game. It sounds like he's going to be good to go coming out of their bye week. But um, Rashad White definitely looks like a guy that's going to see a lot more playing time moving forward. He could be the starter moving forward. And I mean, we could just call it what it is. He looks a lot more explosive, a lot faster. And that offense needed any kind of spark they can get. So the more touches White gets, uh, I think the better off that they are. And I mean, at the end of the day right now, you're looking at two guys that I think are viable flex flex plays for uh, the rest of the season. Yeah, I think they're going to be at worst basically splitting 60-40, 50-50, something like that. And there's a chance that they just go with Rashad White coming out of the bye. It's something that I always talk about, the post-bye rookie bump. There was a little bit of context in this game. Leonard Fournette, they weren't even sure if he was going to play because he forgot his passport, and he literally got his passport (laughs) like a couple hours before. So I wonder if that's why Rashad White actually got the start here. Um, But later in the game, when Leonard Fournette has an injury, Rashad White played most of it. They got Keyshawn Vaughn a couple touches, but Rashad White uh, gets a goal line carry. And for a couple weeks now, they haven't used Rashad White in one situation. They've been giving him like an entire drive. And to me, that's a better signal. Sometimes we get carried away with somebody that's just been playing passing down backs. And then there's like an injury or something. And then we expect them to get the goal line. And then these teams just rug us. I don't think that's going to happen with Rashad White. If the, if he's the actual guy, he can handle 80% of the snaps. And that's how you have league winning upside. So um, he's uh, basically a must own at this point. I don't view him very dissimilar to someone like Alexander Madison, somebody like Tony Pollard, um, for example. So, Great find there. All right, who's up Who's up next? Yeah, next up we got uh, Green Bay Packers receiver Christian Watson. Doesn't take a genius to tell you, yeah, he exploded in week 10. Three touchdowns, obviously, but I think Green Bay is just starved for wide receiver talent at this point. They clearly keep giving this guy opportunities. Obviously, he's a highly drafted rookie. Uh, very exciting downfield player. He's going to be, I think, very boomer bust, and it's going to be hard to project uh, You know how consistent he's going to be because it's either going to be a 50 yard touchdown or probably not much out of him but Romeo Dubs high ankle sprain he's probably going to be out three four five weeks something around there uh and I mean really outside of that they don't have much Alan Lazard been a good player but they need somebody to win downfield very badly and Watson I think with that kind of a performance could buy himself a lot more playing time I think it's the perfect yin yang situation with Alan Lazard, who I think is a pretty underrated receiver, like intermediate underneath. They can get him in some bubble screens. Christian Watson's the downfield stretcher. You're not going to get three touchdown games from him, but the fact that he can beat man coverage, and that's what the Cowboys were throwing out against the Packers. They're just daring them. Cover one, I think it was the highest rate in a game all season. Christian Watson took advantage. That's all athleticism. Uh, Jalen Warren is your number five player mixed in with Najee Harris. Uh, there was a lot of play volume for the Steelers in general. So I do want to pay attention to some of the team share stats, but he was playing in the game early with Najee Harris. Yeah. So one thing I think to note here is that the coaching staff has been talking about getting Jalen Warren more involved. And I think that, you know, obviously we see that a lot of times and it never comes to fruition, but it seems like that is coming to fruition here. Uh, And some of the beats plugged in there, they're suggesting that this is probably going to be the case moving forward. Najee Harris more effective when they can scale some of those snaps back. So it's not just a Jalen Warren thing. I think it's also a Najee Harris thing. Not really been all that healthy this season either. It seems like the foot is still probably bothering you to some degree. And then Warren, I mean, he's just been more productive on a per snap, per efficiency type basis. So uh, this looks like it's probably the best outcome for these Steelers, not just in real life. Life, but also for uh, fantasy football purposes. So um, something to keep our eyes on. I don't know that Warren's ever going to be startable, but obviously one of the better handcuffs, I think, at this point in time. And then a guy that could carve himself out a bigger role moving forward. Definitely something you want to keep tabs on. Yeah, I think that you, you summed it up perfectly. He's just somebody to have on your bench because we have complete confirmation that if something does happen to Najee Harris, Jalen Warren would be somebody that is capable of handling a big workload back there all right we got a couple more names only a couple minutes left in this let's go let's try to go rapid fire donovan peoples jones isaiah mckenzie mac hollins kg hamler these are kind of some dart throw wide receivers do you have a favorite out of those yeah so i think the one that i'm really looking at here is dpj donovan peoples jones yes he's played a lot of snaps he's run a lot of routes uh his target share hasn't dropped below 17 percent. i think just one time in the last six games so he's very involved and you might suggest that that's probably not good because the production hasn't really been all that great but we're talking about a guy in wide receiver three territory right now and yes of course Deshaun Watson finally practicing with the team this week he will be back in a week or two I don't really know how that's going to end up going but I think that's worth an addition because obviously Watson a better football player than Jacoby Brissett and that will likely have a positive impact on that receiver room I think DPJ is a guy you'd probably want to stash in uh to get out ahead of everyone else in in the next week or two 
Yeah, he's his skill set matches up with Deshaun Watson. Jacoby Brissett's not known for his deep ball. Deshaun Watson definitely slings it downfield, so it's a good matchup there. Uh, Cole Komet is your number eight add. If you need tight ends, I think Cole Komet definitely makes a lot of sense. I will say some of his touchdowns pretty fluky, uh, bootleg going across the field for a wide open touchdown. But at the same time, that just shows that the bears offense is actually functional. And that's been the primary difference. So he's been like a borderline top 10 player in, in the fantasy usage model. Um, I think that he is worth picking up. Did you see anything else from Cole Komet? Yeah, I agree pretty much with what you're saying. I think the chemistry that Justin Fields obviously has with him, they're starved for playmakers on offense. The fact that they're running plays specifically designed for him, I think is a very important facet here. Some of that tight end throwback, like you mentioned. So um, very fluky. You know, you can't count on five touchdowns in two weeks, I think. But at the same time, tight end's terrible. He's a tight end one right now. Uh, probably a guy you want to add. All right, la last one real quick. Um, just in case you were sleeping at the will, uh, Jeff Wilson and Raheem Moster, definitely a two-back committee. Jeff Wilson got a lot of run in the second half when they were winning. Uh, Raheem still starts, still playing the two-minute drill, but Jeff Wilson certainly involved, and this offensive line's low-key kind of gelling. I think that's been like the big storyline. So that was somebody that uh, Sosa was ahead of last week. So um, drop a comment. Tell us who we haven't hit on who's going to be a league winner down the stretch. We'll try to get to them next week. We'll be back every Monday. Read his column, Underdog Network. Follow Sosa on Twitter. Follow Underdog NFL on Twitter as well. Get all your notifications for news. All right, guys. Later. Later.